This is Jackie, and I'm here with CKY at the Washington, D.C., Maryland stop of uh, the Van Swart Tour. You guys recently released your new album, Phoenix, after about an eight-year hiatus. Why is The Phoenix a fitting title for the album? The Phoenix uh, is fitting because it's kind of a uh, rebirth for the band itself. Uh, like a phoenix, we kind of uh, burnt ourselves out alive, and then we, we, we were reborn through those very same ashes, I would imagine. That's why. And so why was it at the right time for you to release a new album? We all started to feel good, and some more than others. I was living in L.A., uh, and I felt like I hadn't been laid in a while. <laughs> <laughs> and music is a really good way to help that happen. Yeah, so wrote a bunch of songs and figured that that would in turn turn towards touring where I would be able to meet some girls and it, it's worked. Uh, that was going to be our next question. I'm, I'm glad it's working. That's important. Yeah, nice to meet you, Jackie. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Um, so what has changed for CKY since the last album? Uh, our attitude, um, our perspective on the future. Uh, um, man, yeah. Jess, go on. We're, so we're taking care of ourselves so more. You know, we, we, uh, we realize how grateful we are to be doing this, so we're not taking it for granted. It could all go away tomorrow, and we're just enjoying it now and taking care of ourselves and enjoying being friends, playing music. Sometimes with age comes a little bit of wisdom every once in a while. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with that. I really start to appreciate that you get to do this for a living. Not everyone gets to do that. So, uh, yeah, it took us a while to figure that one out. <laughs> so what are some things or people that influenced your songwriting this time around? Uh, lessons learned always influence songwriting and just trying to be better than your your last song you know or uh, or equally as good sometimes but just um, you know music's really separate from anything uh, it's it, music comes from a different spot it's almost hard to, to tell where it comes from in the end you can put reasons for it and and explain it away but honestly it's a natural process it's hard to it's, it's hard to come down with a real answer of where inspiration comes from so how do songs like uh, Breakdown and Replaceable represent the album's overall sound? Oh, good questions. Jesse? I think this record's kind of all over the place, to be honest. Uh, each song has its own personality. We had a, a good amount of time to really focus on... Um, we wanted to, you know, do all the familiar CKY stuff, but put a new edge to it. And, um, yeah, I mean, every song is different. There's heavy stuff, there's dance groove stuff. I mean, it's got it all, really. So. Head for a Breakdown, uh, compositionally, I think is far more mature and, and advanced from previous stuff. Uh, there's a lot more compositional and orchestral stuff, background melodies, just contradictory melodies and, and syncopated rhythms throughout the record. It's a bit more fun of an album. Um, and we did it in a more uh, or organic fashion where they worked as a band in a rehearsal room, and then we went and recorded it instead of trying to figure out figure out what a uh, computer figure out. <laughs> and then, yeah, we got it. Yeah. So the music scene has changed. <laughs> the music scene has changed so much uh, since 2009. Uh, what role do you feel music videos play in CKY in 2017? Whereas 2009, there was a channel that played them. You know, it's funny you say that because we are premiering a brand new music video tomorrow. tomorrow. Uh, I don't know you when. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> are you new about this? Maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have a brand new music video, which kind of ironically, uh, sarcastically, and comedically portrays uh, the ridiculousness of filming a music video. Just how how idiotic the whole process is. How many people who don't know what the fuck they're talking about get involved. Um, you know. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, ironically, the music video does uh, just show that whole process of how stupid the whole thing is. But at the end, the music video is about trying to find any director who can finally put something together for us. But a video. I mean, a, a video, a videos are still good to see what a band looks like while listening to a good recorded version of their song versus watching like a YouTube uh, crappy audio version mixed with, you know, like a live thing. 
So, I mean, yeah, it's still cool. I love music videos. I mean, we grew up with music videos. So I, st I still think they're worth it. I don't know where to see them all at once or watch them all day, but... There, there is a couple times, though, I have to confess, where I really like a song, and then I see the video, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> or the opposite, though. Yeah, or the opposite. Yep. I mean, if without a music video, how are you going to get the girls? True. There you go. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to help you. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I see what you mean. Again, the music, the music scene being so different, what role do you see streaming sites versus album sales, especially having just released some new music? Jess. Uh, I personally love Spotify, but I don't like getting my checks from them. <laughs> that seems to be the band consensus of like, as a music fan, I like it because I can get so much stuff. But as a musician, I hate it. So how do you rectify that sort of double edge? When I see a McDonald's ad before our song and stuff, and I'm like, okay, why does my check look like that? <laughs> you are not loving it is what you're saying. I understand. <laughs> um, that was good. <laughs> I try, I try. <laughs> so after, so why do Warp Tour this year? Because it, it's, it's, not, it's not always fun. It's hot and gross and a lot of work. Hey, the work is the, is the best thing about it. We love the work. That's, you know, that's what we do. But uh, it's been an amazing summer. There couldn't have been a better tour for this band at this time. Um, just traveling around to every city in America and, and with the same crew of people, you know, make a ton of friends. You get to play every day. Um, what what better summer could there be, honestly, in America? Yeah. And for the release of the Phoenix to happen on day one of Warped Tour, we couldn't have asked for better timing. It was, it was incredible. It's, it's been 17 years since we've been on the Warped Tour. Uh, we did the Warped Tour in 1999 and 2000. Uh, the first year and the second year, we uh, snuck on <laughs> the festival and did most of the dates on a friend's stage, uh, a, a stage called the Volcom Stage. Uh, Volcom Clothing had a stage. And we got kicked off both of those years. So this time, we were asked back by the great Kevin Lyman, and we are here on the main stage, and we are doing our best to not get kicked off this time. <laughs> we'll see how that mission goes. What's up next after Warp Tour? APMAs on Monday. Yeah. God, that's tomorrow. Shit. So tomorrow, then what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're doing a fall tour. Uh, we can't really talk much about it, though, but we'll be out back out in the fall. We'll be around here at Silver Spring, Maryland. And, uh, yeah. So you're ready to get busy. Stay tuned for much more from CKY. This is Jackie. Thanks to Chorus FM and One Avenue.